Hello, it's Jamie and Marcus, and we are on our way back from Baltimore. Jamie's driving and paying attention to the road. I have the camera, and we're going to uh, talk restaurant operations. There was some conversation at this uh, um, restaurant meeting. At the restaurant meeting about what makes a good chef, you know, because a lot of, a lot of there's a lot of great cooks out there, a lot of fantastic cooks, and my personal feeling and some other chefs are that it takes much more than just to be a good cook to be a chef okay chef is a title that's really earned and there's many different levels that uh, that one can that one needs to aspire to and really know quite well to be a chef now the reason why the average chef can't open a restaurant we had a speaker today I don't know if you were in the room Jamie while he, while he started off his spiel about how he owned a restaurant in New Orleans I missed that part yeah so he was like um, when I was out of college, this and that, we were in New Orleans, we owned a restaurant. He goes, we could cook the food, we could get the, cook, the food out on the tables, we could make the guests happy. He goes, but all the other stuff, we just couldn't make it work. He, and he made a joke out of it. He's like, we were terrible at running the business. <laughs> Cooking the food was no problem. Right. Running the business, paying the bills, pricing the food out, marketing, all that other stuff. He goes, we sucked at it. And I think they were only open like a couple of years before they had to call it quits. <laughs> so that's why a lot of people say to people, oh, you bake such great pies. You should have a bakery. Or the chef is like, man, you cook great food. You should have your own restaurant. And the reality is, a lot of these people, 80% of them just can't make it work because they don't have they don't have the proper skills. You wanna put your visor on the other side over there? Let's see, there's a little glare over there. Might be able to avoid. Yeah, that's oh that's much better. So here's what chefs need to be able to be. You know, when I was an executive chef at the country clubs that I was at, I felt like a lot of times that I was like the kitchen accountant more than I was a chef because I had to really manage numbers. And I had, we have to do that in our own place. I have to, we have to manage numbers. You're very good at posting labor costs, figuring out labor costs, and running reports on that and posting it so I can see that. Um, so besides cooking, knowing financials are extremely strong. Labor costs, food costs. Now most chefs don't know even how to convert food costs. If you give them a, two, they don't even know what numbers they need. They don't even know, a lot of them are just totally clueless about converting food, food costs. We had a chef that worked for us once that came from corporate America who said he knew how to do all that and he had no clue on how to do that. Idea, yeah. Then we had another chef who worked for us for a couple years, younger kid, and remember you caught him in the hallway the one night, like really bitching and I hate doing inventory, I don't know why I have to do inventory and this and that, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> remember that? You have to do inventory because it's your job and you're the chef. And you have to report numbers back to us and we need to make sure that everything's in line. And most chefs that have worked for us, we've given them free reign to understand the computer, right? Absolutely. Chef tech, what we do, marketing, this and that. And barely any of them ever taken us up on the opportunity to see exactly how we run our business. They're more interested in walking in, getting a paycheck, putting food up in the window and on the table, and leaving. That's it. That's it. They don't want to put in any No more extra effort. effort. Zip zero zilch effort. When I was a young chef, I was like, teach me everything I can possibly know to run a restaurant. I've always thought of myself as more than a chef. I always thought of myself as an entrepreneur, a restaurateur, more than just a chef. People ask me when I was 24, they go, they go, what are you? I said, I'm a restaurateur. I'm not a chef, I'm a restaurateur. And I didn't even own a restaurant at 24, right? But I knew that's what I wanted to do. I knew, you know, that I had a knack for business as well as a love for cooking. I think chefs need to know nutrition. I think that's super important to have a basic understanding, not be a dietitian, not be a nutritionist, but have a basic understanding of all the diets that are out there. Know what paleo is, know what gluten-free is, know what the high-carb diet is, understand that, hey, cross-contamination is important, um, and even understand agriculture. I think chefs need to understand how our food is produced. And where it comes from. Where it comes from. What goes into making it. What right. goes into the products or into you know, growing something. Yeah, it's it's like the kid who just drinks milk, but now doesn't know the milk comes from a cow. Right. Right. He, he just think it comes from the grocery store. Chefs just think, well, my food comes from Cisco or U.S. Foods. No, understand where the food 
actually comes from and how it's made and the agricultural impacts on the environment. Let's face it, restaurants are the number one offender of waste. Waste, the environment. Well, how about food philosophy and history? Food history. Yeah, I think that's important. It's so important. I think it's I think it's important in certain certain businesses, right? In certain restaurants, I guess. Certain restaurants require that much more. And certain certain restaurants may never require right. food history. But you know what? That's I think a well-rounded aspect of a chef. And for a chef to be a leader, and for a chef to train staff, food history is a must. If you want to train staff, you want you want to inspire people under under you. You've got to know food history because you're there to teach people. You just can't say, hey, do this, do that. Hey, this is why we do it. And then, you know, in 1850 or for millennia, or this is originally from this culture, this civilization, civilization, this food, is so important to gain respect from the people who work under you. A chef also needs to be a coach. They you need to guide. Coach your team. They gotta coach their team. And a lot of times it's gonna feel like babysitting. And I gotta tell you, a lot of a lot of staff do need to be babysat, right? They, they do appreciate somebody who explains things to them, watches them, helps them, teaches them. Right. With the limited staff pool that restaurants have nowadays, everybody's in this labor crunch of, well, I can't find staff, I can't find staff. I'd rather, that's the time that a chef has to step up his management game and say, you know what? I can't find the ideal cooks. I don't have enough cooks. I need to get more out of my staff and be more patient with them so they can produce more and I have more longevity in them. And a lot of chefs are not patient and they're not good leaders, they're not good teachers. Right. They just think demanding things from people. I worked for one chef who had a great position at a, at a beautiful resort. The only thing the guy could ever teach anybody, and especially me, he told me this five or six times. I only worked, didn't work there long. It was a joke. The only thing he ever told me was, Hey, make sure you peel potatoes. When you put potatoes, put them in water so they don't turn brown. Huh. And I was like, dude, you already told me that like the other day when I did it. And you told me that last week. And he'd be like, think like he was like teaching me something. I'm like, no, I want to learn more than potatoes turning brown in water. That's 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 culinary school stuff. A lot of chefs think once they graduate culinary school, oh, I'm a great chef and I got a degree in this and that. And that's the problem with hiring people from like the Culinary Institute of America, Johnson and Wales, because these people just spent. 50 grand, 75 grand on their education. And they've been in a school system where they're being, that the, they're taught, well, we're the best in the world right now. We're the best culinary school. We're the best graduates. When I graduate school, I have to make $60,000 so I can start paying for my, my college loans. And in the real world, that's not reality. You're walking out of college as a graduate, you might be making 12 bucks an hour unless you're going to a big city where the cost of living is much, much more. And, uh, or you're working in a union house somewhere, but you know that's all offset by your uh, by your by your living expenses and, your, and where you're going. Yeah, you can go to Vegas and, and make a lot more money, or you can go to Atlantic City in a union house or New York City. But you know, if you go to the countryside somewhere, you go through you know rural places. The reality is that the, the, it's just not that good of money, and you've got to be patient and put the time in and learn about about food and about operations and and just about how to be a diligent employee. Um, I'm all for going and getting a lot of experience. I've always been for that. I've always said, man, I'd work at a job for two years and I'm gonna go get another job and, and learn all I can from that place in a full year. And if I can't learn more from that place, then I'm gonna go find another place to work that'll actually teach me something. 